Hey guys, it's Steve, and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today, we're doing matte paintings. Matte paintings in Blender. If you're unfamiliar with what a matte painting is, well, basically, it is cutting out a section of your footage and replacing it with a still image. Um, mostly used like in the background of scenes, not like a center point, but um, it works well for uh, people that need to do uh, what would be very difficult effects, real cheap and kind of uh, simple. Instead of you know spending a lot of time modeling like this huge castle that you see here, I just take an image and paste it in the background. And if depending on your footage, it can look very convincing and very good. So great for uh, great for filmmakers that don't have a lot of money to spend on their project and don't have a lot of time because it's very easy and quick. So let's jump right into it. Basically, what I'm going to do to start is switch right to my motion tracking tab. Here, I'm going to open up my footage that is uh, included in the description if you want to follow along. But um, first, what I want to quick show you guys is Blender's video editor motion tracking tab works a lot better with um, basically image sequences. Okay. So if you can convert your footage to an image sequence, you'll have better results. So what I use is a free program that works on Windows and Mac, and it's called MPEG Stream Clip. Basically, all you have to do is open your MPEG Stream Clip application, open your video footage. Uh, mine is on the desktop right here. And then all you got to do is export to other formats image sequence, type in the frame rate, which is 29.97. And uh, you want to do that here too, I think, 29.97 frame rate. And then you just go OK and save it out into a folder. So really simple. I have already done this, so I'm not going to do it again. But that's what you would do if you wanted to convert it to an image sequence. You don't have to, but I've gotten better results doing it this way. So I'm going to open up my image sequence that uh, I've made. And it's 275, roughly, the length. Um, you, can, you don't have to do the whole 275. You can do more or less, depending on what you want. But that's what I did, so I'll go with that. And um, I'm going to set up the uh, camera settings here to be what I used on my camera. I used the, uh, the Canon a APS-C, so make sure it uh, changes. Sometimes it'll say it's that, but it's not. You just got to click it. So APS-C, and it'll be 2.3 sensor. And then the lens is 55 millimeters. Uh, I'm zoomed in at about 55. And that is why this is going to be really easy to do. Because basically, there's not a whole lot of perspective in my scene. So I can get away doing a real simple, quick and dirty track um, by having it all done automatically, basically. So... Let's just do that. Because there's not a lot of perspective shift, I don't have to be concerned about manually placing tracks. I'm just going to basically be doing what might be considered a 2D track automatically. So um, I'm going to choose blurry footage over here. And you'll see it will change some of these settings. The pattern size, I'm going to increase up to 61. And the search size, I'm going to go to 121. And that's basically all you have to do. Now you can click Detect Features. You get these markers placed automatically across your entire scene. And I'm just going to go track forward. So I have, you know, uh, my start and end point set 1, 2, 7, 5. And it just starts tracking each individual track forward. Perfect. So uh, I'm going to let this track all the way through and jump back after this is done. It might take a few minutes. I'm at frame like 12 right now. So um, I'll pause the recording and be right back. All right, it's finished. And you can see a lot of the tracks in the center have uh, held the whole time. So that's great. That's very good. I'm very happy about that. So um, let's do a little bit of cleanup work now. So I have all these tracks so that a lot of them go bad right away, right? So basically, I'm going to switch from my track tab to my soft tab over here and go to cleanup. And um, you, can, you can clean up by the amount of frames each track has or the amount of air each track has. I cannot do the air until I solve the camera motion, but I can do the frames. So that's what I'll do right now. And any frames that are smaller than 60, any track that has less than 60 frames tracked, I want to select. Okay? So click Clean Tracks. 
and it will select all these frames that are under 60 frames and I'll delete them. Perfect. So now I'm just going to take all my tracks here and solve camera motion, I believe. Well, hang on. I need to, uh, need to set my keyframes. Okay. I'm going to set this to like 210 to 250. Basically keyframe A and B is where, um, whatever spot in your footage has the most perspective shift. And I kind of have a little bit of a movement here, not a whole lot of perspective shift, but it might work. So let's try it. Self camera motion 57. Eh, that's kind of bad. Let's see if I can't get better by going 220. Self camera motion. Oh yeah, here we go. It's taking a while. It's gonna be better. And four. So that's pretty good. I got a four and my uh, solve. That's good. I can go with that. So now I'm going to have all my tracks unselected and I'm going to go an error of say four, anything with an error of four, I want to select. All right. I selected all these and delete them. Boom, boom, boom. That that's perfect. 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 So now if I go selecting them all and go solve camera motion, I should get a much better solution. Yeah. 1.7. That is uh, very workable. That should work fine in this case. So we'll go with that. We'll just jump ahead and move forward. So I'm just going to, I'm going to switch to cycles. Uh, you really don't have to. You can use Blender internal too. I'm not doing any like real rendering. I'm just familiar with it right now and just feel like using it. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to go set as background and set up tracking scene. And that should be it for the uh, motion tracking tab. If I go default, you see I have my camera set up with a bunch of tracks. And like I said, not a whole lot of perspective. They're all pretty much flat. And that's basically all I need. I don't really want the perspective right now anyways. So I'm just going to delete these uh, cube and plane and lamp. And let's set up my camera. So I'm just going to rotate it till it's about what it was shot at. I mean, you don't have to be. I'll just snap it to the center. Selection, Shift S, and Selection to Cursor. Here, why don't I uh, quick go user preferences, add-ons, and turn on my uh, key pressing. Screencast keys. There we go. Now you guys can uh, see whenever I push a key. Boom, boom, boom. Perfect. So um, now I'm going to shoo, go top view and rotate it so it's going right along the uh, Y axis here. And then I can go to front view and rotate it so it's just kind of squared off and nice like that. That's good. So um, I have my camera and I have my tracks. I might just pull this back here, like something like that. Now I'm going to enable another add-on. So user preferences, add-ons, and the images as planes add-on. All right, so check that box to enable it. And now if I go shift A, I can go images as planes right here under mesh. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna open up my uh, image here. This will be included in the description if you want to follow along. And uh, if I go top view and if I go textured, you can see I have my castle here that I'll be using. So I'm just going to scale this up, rotate it 90 degrees, uh, command Z, rotate it minus 90 degrees. There we go. And place it over here by all my markers. All right. So maybe I'll rotate it a little bit just to kind of match the angle of the markers. But now if I go zero, you can see the whole castle is filling my view, which is good. I want that. But um, you want to make sure it's completely filling your view view at all times. And um, I don't think it is right here. Um, as you can see, my track looks like it goes a little wonky at the end here. I go from 250, and then you can see it, things start moving a little differently. Well, maybe not. Eh, it might be good. I was going to say you can lower your frames here, but I might just go with that. I'm not, I'm not panicking about nothing. <laughs> so I'm just going to move my, uh, my uh, castle up a little bit, and then scale it along the x-axis just a little bit. I don't want to stretch it too much, but I found that a little bit of stretching goes unnoticed. So I'll just do a little bit like that. Now I'll just kind of pan through my footage and make sure that the castle never goes out of frame. And that is pretty good. I might be able to scale it down a little bit more so I don't have to don't have to stretch it too much. Uh-huh. And we're still good. Perfect. Maybe lower it down just a tad here too. We can experiment with that later. 
So basically, I just need that, and I don't need anything else but that. So I'm going to go to my render layers and just use my background right now, uncheck the foreground, and that should be good. I'm just needing it. Okay, I just need to add an emission material. Do this. Don't get ahead of myself, just stay in the moment. <laughs> so I'm going to go node editor. Um, with this selected, I'm going to change the diffuse texture out for shift a emission shader. There we go. And use this instead. So basically this will give it an emit material, but it'll also be shadeless. So it'll be the actual brightness of the uh, image and have no like shading or shadows or anything rendered from Blender. So that's good. So let's do a render and get into the compositing this into our shot. All right, so I just hit F12 and you can see, bamo, I get that render. If we go compositing, oop, hang on, I don't see anything in compositing right now. I should, I should see something, right? Use nodes, use nodes. Okay, I don't know if I was just blind as a bat or didn't see them or what, but um, just switching around, I did that, and then they're right here. So I don't know if they popped up or if I was just blind as a bat, but they should be here for you. Don't worry, they should be here. So um, I want this layer, okay? I don't need any of the shadows. This is all for shadows here. I'm just gonna delete all that. And I want my background footage here, okay? So I'm gonna use my movie clip here, the undistortion node, and the scale. This should all be here if you clicked Setup Tracking Scene in the Motion tab here, all right? So um, that's good. I don't need this. I just want this and that. Perfect. So what are we going to do now? Basically, basically, I'm going to add an alpha over and set this up here. You won't see, you won't see anything right now. Basically, just the castle. Or if I do this and then put this one over, you'll see just this. This is what I want, okay? This is all I need for the moment because I'm going to be adding in. Here, let me. Nah, never mind. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. There we go. If you shift space, you can uh, center your thing over that. Shift space again and go back. All right, a little quick tip there. So um, to change the uh, factor to um, basically. Basically, show the castle. I'm going to be cutting out the sky in this movie clip. So to do this, I was use, trying to use uh, the let me see king map, and this works for a lot of things, but I just wasn't getting the results I needed. So I used the lumens key, and this is just a really simple node, but it did a really good job I found on uh, doing what I needed. If you just mess with the settings a little bit, you can real easily isolate just the trees. You can see, basically I'm just selecting all the white areas out of, uh, out of my, out of my, uh, what is it, video, yeah. So um, there, I, I might experiment with this a little bit, but I'm gonna go with that for the moment. And if you just plug this into your factor, you should see a kind of crummy looking version of what we're doing. Um, let me try flipping this around, there we go. Yes, and yeah, pop this in there. So you can see the tree's back there, but it doesn't look real great just yet. I mean, the castle's back there, but it doesn't look real great just yet. So um, yeah, you can check multiply. It doesn't really make a difference. But um, I'm going to clean up now the uh, basically this whole setup by first adding in a filter, de delete, and erode. Okay. Now you can also experiment with these getting mixed results, you know. Maybe, maybe what you want, maybe not, but I'm pretty happy. Oh, 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 okay, I made a mistake here. We want to choose matte, I believe, for our factor as well. So there we go. That's a little better, I think. I think so. Yeah, you can see now we're adjusting this more like we want to be. So just tweak these a little bit until you get the best result possible without losing too much detail in the trees. Something like, something like that's okay. Now with our delete slash erode node, we're going to change the mode to be feather. All right, now we're going to put the distance up a little bit and use this mask as a factor. And you can see we get these blurry trees. 
which don't look so hot right now, but we have too much blurring and we want to go into a negative, no, we want a positive number of blurring. Okay, so let's just do like a two and then let's kind of cut back a little bit more with this. Oh, I got to put the mat in the mask here. Yep. So the mat from the luminous key goes into the mask and then as a factor. So you can do a little bit more blurring here and you can see it's looking better. And then just this and just kind of, you know, this is kind of a lot of tweaking, you know, and you can spend a lot of time doing this and you can spend a little bit of time doing this. And I think actually what I did in my scene is instead of using feather here, I just went with the distance and chopped it back like one step. And then I just added in a blur node. Blur. And it shows fast gauge in relative like a 0.13 or something. 0.13. And that I think might give you a little bit more control over it because we can now use this distance and then you can use a blur and you know maybe just a little more control so I think I'll do that and that is looking not too not too bad right now I'm pretty happy with that but it doesn't really match yet you know I mean it looks good but it doesn't really match so I might tweak that a little bit yeah yeah we can't go 100% we need to cut back a little bit there there we go pull this in a little bit give us a little more detail on the trees See what I mean by like a lot of experimenting, you know, it might take a little time before you get it right, but it is pretty, pretty good method I found. There we go. And maybe a little bit more blurring now. You can just see these being a little bit chopped up over there. So maybe I could go a little bit more on the blur. Uh, one five, maybe. And one five, make it along the Y. So that's not too bad. I mean, I'm really zoomed in right now. Um, you could chop it back. Eh, I don't want to chop it back more though. Yeah, so I mean, practice makes perfect and uh, <laughs> just experiment. It will change depending on your scene. Like I uh, like I said, this isn't the best scene because it's a little bit blurry and stuff, but you're not always going to be working with the best scene, you know? So this is a good, uh, kind of a good workflow uh, example to see like what you might actually be working with in real world examples type of thing so there we go that's uh that's not too shabby right now and i'm gonna go with it like i said you can tweak it forever <laughs> i spent a lot of time tweaking my final one but um let's make these colors match now huh this uh this looks pretty good but it doesn't quite match so basically what i'm gonna do is i'm going to first off i'm gonna add a color mix node all right and i'm just gonna mix a little bit of a light blue into the castle scene here. Not much, but just like a 0 0.05. No, not even that much, just like 0 0.02. Just to make it seem like it's a little bit of distance, you know, between us and the castle here. So maybe even a little less than that, but you can see it might add, it does add a little bit of realism, make it a little darker blue. There we go. That's not too bad. Maybe I can go back up a little bit more. All right. And um, now we're going to add in a color correction node. And I'm just going to darken this castle up a little bit um, by changing the master on the gamma. You can see I can darken it up and it's matching better. There we go. Oop, not too much. It's a little bit sensitive. Maybe the gain a little bit, just a tad. Uh, take the gamma down just a tad more. Again, just tweaking to your heart's desire. That's not too bad. I kind of like that. Um, maybe it needs a little bit of work, but uh, that's not too bad. It looks like maybe, is this being cut out there? I don't know. Let me see. Are we cutting you out there? Eh, not really. We're pretty good there. We're pretty good there. All right. So that's pretty good. Um, what does this look like if I switch to feather? You can see, yeah, you pretty much want to use threshold or distance. Distance is the best though. Distance is the best. All right, maybe a little more blur. Okay, I'm not tweaking it anymore. <laughs> nope, you can't make me. So that's not bad for there, but we need a little bit of uh, final color correction, I think. 
in my scene I did a color balance then. And once you have these matching, this isn't perfect. I could maybe maybe do a little bit more color matching by adding in a color balance node over here as well. And it looks like this is a little bit more purpley maybe. Just a little bit, kind of. Whew, a little bit goes a long way. But just a tad bit more like, yeah. That's not too bad. It looks like it blends in there pretty well now. Pretty happy with that. So now for the final color correct, I did my basic kind of filmic look by giving it kind of a dark blue and then kind of a lighter in the, the gain, kind of a green, reddish, kind of sort of pow wow thing there. <laughs> pow wow. And, <laughs> and then you can also add a normal or was it color correction node? Right here. Put that in there, and I desaturated the whole thing a bit. Because things always look cool or desaturated. So that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, this was a really simple scene to do. It wasn't, wasn't too much task. This is all animated and tracked. And, you know, I'm going to quick add a, uh, a vignette here as we speak. But, um... Just lens distortion node at one. But yeah, I mean, this scene is pretty pretty good looking for so little work. You know, this is just showing how you can use simple effects like this to get pretty high quality looking effects. And I'm uh, pretty happy with it. I'm just going to quick add a blur node to blur this lens distortion. Fast garage in. Do it at like 16 by 16. And then a quick color mix. Multiply and put this in the bottom. I hope I'm not moving too fast for you guys. Um, I think I've done this a lot already. The This whole lens distortion note. Eh, don't connect that. So, um, here we go. We got the lens distortion going. And then turn it down a bit in the mix node so it's not too much. Yeah, just a little bit of, just a little bit of a vignette. Never hurt nobody. There we go. And that's not too bad. So there you go, guys. That's uh, that's my final results, and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was uh, helpful, and maybe you learned a thing or two. If you did, leave a like in the comments below, and uh, maybe a suggestion in the comments below. <laughs> a like on the video, a suggestion in the comments for my next tutorial, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.